Hello everyone, I'm Marcus Lab. This is the Indie Music Lab. Uh, let me ask you a question. So, have you ever been working on a song and you don't know when to stop? You don't know if you spent too much time on it, not enough time. You don't know if you're ruining your song by spending too much time on it or if you need to work another five hours and then it'll be magically way better than it currently is. This is a struggle that I totally understand. Let's talk about it today, shall we? Okay, step number one to put yourself in better position to finish your song is fix the cringies. This is something that beginners especially easily forget and I was terrible with this when I first started out producing music. Let me ask you something. When you're reading a book, which of these two things is more memorable? On the one hand, uh, a bad typo or a really good line in the book. Now, I might be a weirdo, but a bad typo is way more memorable than any good line that that book has or any good idea that that book brings into my mind. The typo sticks out like a sore thumb. My thumb looks really weird. Gosh, these things are strange. And a book with a bunch of typos in it makes you feel like the writers and the editors did a sloppy job. I think one of the reasons beginners tend to forget this is there is no direct reward for your song to not be distracting or not be cringy. So what do we do? We focus on adding a bunch of new ear candy and exciting stuff and, and, and the stuff that makes your ears just sparkle and fly off your face. And we leave all the production and editing and mixing typos unaddressed. And that is a problem. So to fix this problem, here's something practical that I highly recommend you do. Grab your phone or just a post-it note and take your song, listen to it for three to five times on repeat and grab your notepad and write down up to five moments or five things or mistakes in the song that need to be addressed. I don't recommend writing more than five down at one time. If you've reached that many, if, if you're at five, Fix those first, and then you can go back and repeat the process. This is how I eliminate mistakes in my songs, and I have found it to be highly effective and efficient. So treat your song like a professional and eliminate the typos. Got it? Cool. Okay, step number two is the thumbs up, thumbs down test. It still looks really weird. I don't remember who this was, but I once heard a songwriting coach on YouTube say something along the lines of, you know when your song is finished if you listen to the song from start to finish and your thumb stays up the whole time. There's no like moment in the song where you're like, oh no, I don't like it, right? It stays up the whole time and you feel good about it from start to finish. Think of this as like the second round of proofreading your song, right? You've already eliminated all the really distracting and obvious mistakes and the cringy moments in the song. But now we're gonna go a little deeper and we're gonna focus on things that just maybe sound too amateur, that sound too beginnerish. Beginnerish. Beginnerish, 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 beginnerish. That's a fun word to say. Like maybe you made the classic rookie mistake of putting way too much reverb on the lead vocal or you didn't cut enough highs or lows off of that reverb that's on the lead vocal. You wanna fix that, right? If it sounds amateur, again, this is something that you wanna do with a thumbs up, thumbs down test. Listen to the song from start to finish. Does your thumb stay up the whole time? If it starts to go sideways and go down, then you might need to address it. Now take this with a grain of salt, however, because at this point in the song, your song has already been written, recorded, produced, mixed. And so I don't want you to go back and do a bunch of complicated things that you don't really know how to do. Only focus on the things that you know how to fix easily and quickly. So use the exact same approach as you did with step one, which is open up your notes app or grab a notepad and just listen to the song on repeat a few times and make a checklist of things that you want to correct. Okay, step number three, and this is more of a warning than it is a step per se, uh, is to beware of diminishing returns. As with every work of art, there comes a point in time where if you spend a good amount of time working on your song, you approach a line where when you cross that line, you reach a point of diminishing returns where everything you do from that point forward gives you very minimal results and makes the song, if 
If it even makes it better, it's, a, it's on a very minimal level. So let's say for the sake of argument that the first five hours that you worked on your song got your song 75% of the way there. Now, let's say you worked on other five hours and that got you an, an additional 20%. So you've spent 10 hours and you've got your song 95% of the way home. Now, let's say you work another five hours, but this time, that extra five hours only nets you a 2% gain. So that means you just spent five extra hours on your song for it to only get a percentage point or two better. This is what I mean by diminishing returns. The longer you work on your song, the less efficient your results will be. And here's another thing, the longer you work on a song, the higher the probability that you'll screw it up. A bunch more time on your song is not a sure way to get, get that song to sound better. In fact, it's very likely that it could even make it sound worse. That's a nightmare. This takes a bit of practice, self-awareness, and discipline to reach a point where you uh, know where that line is, but it's something that you definitely need to uh, be aware of. You, you, you definitely need to work on becoming better at knowing whether or not you're wasting time, whether or not you're actually making the song better by spending a bunch more hours on it. Again, I am far from perfect with this. I'm still working on this, but it is something that I have really found to be absolutely true. All right, and before we get to the final part of the video, I think it's pretty amazing that you're still here and watching this far into the video, so I would love to give you a gift and help you out even more. So in the description below, I've got a link for a free guide. It's called a five-step guide for producing wow factor indie music. Uh, in this guide, I share the five steps, the five phases that a standard production of mine will go through, and I tried to make it as helpful as I possibly could. So feel free to check that out. I think you'll find it really helpful and informative. All right, back to the video. All right, real quick before I go, I've got another bonus tip, so stick around. My bonus tip for knowing when your song is finished is called the Goosebumps Test. So if your song has been recorded, produced, and mixed, and it sounds great, and you went back and you fixed all the cringy moments in the song like we talked about in step one, and you did the thumbs up, thumbs down thing like we talked about in step two, and you slept on it, woke up the next morning, listened to it again, your thumb stayed up the whole time, and you felt goosebumps, bro, your song is done. Get the darn thing mastered. And not only is it done, if it gives you goosebumps, there's a really, really good chance it'll give somebody else goosebumps when they're listening to that song. Which means that your song has a chance to do really well with things like the Spotify algorithm or the Apple Music algorithm or whatever other algorithm there is. Now, I'm not saying every great song will elicit goosebumps when you're producing it or you're writing it. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is, if it does give you goosebumps and you pass the goosebumps test, pay attention to that because that is a sign that your song just might be something special and needs to be shared with the world, okay? All right, that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time.